Billy Donovan is in his 14th season as the head coach of the Florida Gators. The 44-year-old has played in a Final Four. He has won two championships as the coach of the Gators. And in his fifth season at BYU is Dave Rose, the two-time Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. And he's got a terrific team this season. They're a team that scores a lot of points, number two in the country in offense, averaging 83 points a game. Florida defense is going to have to play very well. So the Gators with their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2007 when they won their second of a back-to-back -back national championship. And BYU starts in the man-to-man. -man. Florida's a team that really likes to attack the basket. And our first turnover. The guards run this Florida team as you take a look at Tyus. And now here is Fredette. You were just talking about him. He's out of New York State. He is a tremendous scorer, a tremendous three-point shooter, a guy who can really get to the free throw line. He's also the point guard. Here is the freshman Hawks. Parsons on him. BYU in their fourth consecutive year as an at-large team. Number seven seed is their best seed since 1993. And Dan, they have lost seven consecutive first round games in the NCAA tournament. And uh, coming up momentarily, it'll be Notre Dame against Old Dominion. And then Villanova against 15th seed Robert Morris. Kenny Boynton from outside and Miles getting the Cooper rebound. And Fredette. Well, you can't give him that much room. Hartsock inside, and Fredette, surrounded by Gators, picks it up. Pawns, two-time Utah High School Player of the Year, puts the deuce on the board. And that's one of the things you'll see with BYU. They shoot the ball very, very well, mid-range out to the three-point line. They don't take it all the way to the basket very much, but they can really stick it in the basket. Macklin with the screen as Parsons finds Tyus. He is a junior out of St. Louis. A lot of scoring balance for the Gators. Not uh, one player that stands out with this team. A lot of balance, too, for this BYU team. Nice spinning shot right there by the senior from Provo, Chris Meyer. See, and Macklin's going to have his hands full because Florida cannot afford to double-team the post with the shooters that BYU has out on the perimeter. The unranked Gators, Parsons, lasers one inside, and a good-looking slam by Macklin. He is the Georgetown transfer who has made a difference on the Gator front line. And that's what Florida has to be able to do. They've got to get the big guys involved in the game. Tyus and Macklin, in particular, have to be scoring close to the basket for the Florida offense to be at its most effective. And they both run well, as does Fredette. Hearts out with the rebound. Fredette once again inside against Tyus. <laughs> He's a crafty player, isn't he? Well, crafty is, uh, you know, I went to high school with a guy who used to claim that people had more moves than a can of worms, and that's Jimmer Fredette, <laughs> particularly down around the basket. Walker getting the screen from Macklin and trying the pick and roll. Lightning quick point. Macklin inside. That was a sweet hook. That's good news for Florida right there. You notice that the Florida Gators, their offense, is really based on the ability to pick and roll. And BYU has to be able to defend that. Florida will just kill you with that. The screen and roll, screen and roll. You have to be able to defend that. And that would have started two of two. For that way outside with the missed triple. And Ty is chasing it down. And while defense is the calling card for the Gators, they've got some speed like Irving Walker out of New York. He's a blur. The other way with the nice and a quick rejection by Parsons and picked up by Hawes. He'll work into the taller Macklin. That's a tough shot right there by Hawes. But you saw what BYU likes to do. They like to throw that long pass on the fast break. And Parsons the other way. Well, we know that BYU likes to run. What about the Gators? Are they a running team? They do not mind running, particularly when they can get out in transition. When you talk about the players in this game, we mentioned Fredette. Gets the ball inside, does the little double clutch. He really likes to get it in there, use his body, and get fouled. You can see an outstanding three-point shooter, and he can put numbers on the board. So here's the junior out of Castleberry for the Chandler Parsons at the free throw line for the Gators. He has been in double figures nine of the last 11 games. Dan Warner is going to come in for Tyus. And Warner, who is the terrific sixth man who used to be a starter for the skater program, now comes off the bench and really gives them a bench with, uh, with his unselfish play in that stance. 
Warner's really a good guy distributing the ball. He facilitates things that go on out on the offensive end, although his three-point shot has really been struggling here recently. Yeah, he has not made, he put up a bunch and he's missed a bunch. Here's Fredette from Glens Falls, New York, with the left hand he slides in. Well, he gets in with the left hand, but then he takes with the right hand and he goes back underneath the arm of the defender. He can slide through really small spaces and score. He's got four points so far. Shipman has come in too for the Gators, and here is Warner. So Billy Donovan has gone to his bench early in this game. And look at Florida. They come out and they set a screen for the dribbler. The ball screen is really difficult to defend. Warner. Parsons for three. The close by Hawes. Miles in there was shoved and a foul. As Miles gets the rebound, Macklin picks up his first foul for the Gators. Back and forth we've gone. This is the talk of Utah. For that timeout. Here's 44-year-old Billy Donovan, as you see our Villanova Robert Morris uh, game tipping off here. In just a matter of moments, some of you will be going to that game. 12 uh, consecutive NCAA tournament wins for the Gators. We mentioned before that BYU has lost seven first-round games. There's been a lot of success for this Gator program, of course, the two national championships, but success dating back to 2005 in the first round. Kevin, you're right. Billy Donovan's crew, this is their first time since that second national championship that they've been in the NCAA tournament, so that's the explanation for that winning streak. He's got to be a little concerned early that his team's not doing a very good job on the defensive boards. BYU has three offensive rebounds early. Jonathan Tabinari has now checked in for the Cougars. Jackson Emery with the ball, and he's picked up by Walker. In the man-to-man -man defense, Florida is really trying to make BYU dribble the ball. The Cougars move the ball very effectively via the pass, so they're trying to cut that off. Oh, what a pass there! And Fredette goes inside to Hawes, and out of bounds. The shot clock will be at 10. Inside scoring has been pretty good for BYU. Four zip early on the taller Gators. BYU's got those four offensive rebounds controlling the glass with the 15-16 mark on us right now. Shipman, the most athletic Gator, gets it out. And they go to Murphy, who was a freshman for Florida. So the Gators have gone deep into the bench already to start this game. Going deep early, want to keep the big guys in particular fresh and out of foul trouble. They need to be able to run the entire game. Pick and roll, Parsons, Murphy with the bobble, and here is the Brazilian top and arm. That's what you want to make BYU do is dribble the ball up the court in the fast break. That way you can get back and defend it. Florida thus far has done a pretty nice job of that. 29 wins for the Cougars. That is a program record going all the way back to the 50-51 season. Tavinari for three. That'll loosen a big defense inside. Well, he's an awfully good three-point shooter, and as you saw right there, he does not need very much time to get that shot off. What a quick trigger. Shipman to Warner. Nice ball rotation to Walker. And the turnover right there with a three on one. Fredette to Emery. Pause, and they're fighting away. Knocked away. We talk about Fredette and his ability to score, Kevin, but remember, he's the point guard, leads the team in assists, does a great job drawing the defense, and Tavernari just does not need very much room or time. But Fredette is a guy who draws so much attention. He creates openings for his, his teammates. That was a perfect illustration. He leads the conference, the Mountain West Conference, in scoring does Fredette. Tyus back in the contest. Shipman is out. And Warner, former New Jersey High School Player of the Year. Murphy into Hawks. That's a freshman inside. Eric Murphy from Kingston, Rhode Island. Boy, nice job by Florida to attack the inside. Tyus watches for Dent. Look at that. Well, the dribble never stops. And he travels inside. 13.26 to play here in the first half and run your fantasy baseball league with the award-winning fantasy baseball commissioner. Try it for free at cbssports.com slash commissioner. Miles will check out and they'll bring in Brandon Davies, a freshman from Provo. He's only had one career start and that was in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. And played pretty well. Point. Notice Florida really trying hard to attack the basket on the dribble. 
And Walker from outside. And it finally balled right back to him. A fresh shot clock with which to work. Gives you some idea of the value Werner has to this Florida team. He couldn't get that rebound, but he tipped it to a teammate who could. Boynton launching from outside. That's another miss as you take a look at Dave Rose. If you go back to that University of Houston five slamma jamma team, he was the guard on that ball club. And now in his fifth season, he's had five consecutive 20 win seasons for the Cougars. Yeah, and that's winning a valiant battle against pancreatic cancer. Diagnosed this past summer on a recruiting trip, emergency surgery. And they feel that he has, for the moment, beaten it. His next scan will come up after the tournament, which he hopes is later on this month and maybe even in the next, as uh, Macklin will check back in along with Parsons for the Gators, and Murphy will take a breather, as will Werner for Florida. Florida doing a nice job keeping the ball at their offensive end like a hockey team. They call it forward checking. They're right, yeah. Keeping, <laughs> keeping the ball down there. BYU in the zone on that out-of-bounds play. Florida does not shoot the ball very well from three-point range. Five of ten shooting already this afternoon from the field. And from three, as Dan says, 0 of three. This is Tyus. And picked up down by Emery. And BYU likes to get out and run, and they don't mind shooting the three early in the possession if they have an opening. Abudo, who comes in the game for the first time with a short range shot hitting his first he is from the ivory coast and a sophomore for byu relatively small lineup in the game right at the moment for byu which is why they are in the zone plus they're having a tough time guarding those screen and rolls Tyus had a nice screen right there as parsons tries to wiggle his way for some room so macklin has started this contest two of two Tom and just picked up the foul moments ago. And that's our score with 11.46. The BYU Cougars on top by two as you take a look at Dave Rose, the Cougar coach, and he's changed up his defense a little bit against that uh, Florida offense. Yeah, before the timeout, they went to the 2-3 zone because I think he saw his team having a difficult time guarding the Florida screen and roll, particularly out on the transition. The Gators have gotten a couple of baskets, easy baskets on the inside. Here's Chandler Parsons at the free throw line and the coaches around the Southeastern Conference and talking about this uh, junior Parsons say he's one of the most improved players as the season has gone on in the Southeastern Conference. Playing with a lot more confidence, but that's what you expect from a guy who's a junior. Sure. He's only a 67% free throw shooter. He's missed three free throws already today. Florida has thus far done a nice job defensively. Oh, Macklin got caught. <laughs> and he goes pile driving into Davies. And there was a nice lob pass. And you talked before about the passing of BYU. A lot of times you're going to see it up the sideline. And that's how they get and generate the speed of their offense. But I've noticed a couple times here in even half court, they've got nice lobs and some nice pinpoint passing. Well, they really do a nice job moving the ball side to side and inside with the pass. And that's what you have to disrupt. You have to make them dribble the ball. Macklin just picked up his second personal five. Here's Davies at the free throw line. He is a freshman who has uh, been involved in very few starts. Macklin is going to sit. So Warner is out there with Tyus Walker and Boynton. And Parsons. That's the Gator five. Davies at the line. Tavanari is in the contest right now. Abudo is in for Brigham Young for debt. And Jackson Emmer sets the floor as we approach 11 minutes of play here in the first half from Oklahoma City. And particularly without Macklin, Florida a little thin on the inside, but they still have to try to get the ball inside against that zone. You can't just pass it around the outside and settle for a three. Walker, that's exactly what he'll pop right here. He's got five points. Does Irving Walker, the sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, who's the second leading scorer on this Gator team. I think if you're BYU, you got to live with that. Davies for the travel. Second travel called on BYU down low against that Florida defense. Now the last Florida basket, they just move the ball around until they find the open guy. The defense doesn't adjust. Just a little bit of penetration creates the opening. Very nice play by the Florida Gators. The penetration has been a big factor for them. Another turnover. I think we're seeing a few nerves here early in the game, Kevin. 
not to be surprised by that as Michael Lloyd Jr. is going to check in for the Cougars for the first time and he'll take the place of the junior Jackson Emery. So here comes for death. Billy Donovan talking to us yesterday say he's one of the most impactful players in all of college basketball. Well, he moves well without the ball. He passes the ball well. And this is what he does as well as anything. Takes the ball hard to the goal, looking for the contact. But even if it doesn't come, he still knocks it in. Point. Another three. The close by Lloyd. And he puts in a triple. That's his first three. Walker is at a three. And if those guards begin to loosen things up down below with those long range shots, that's going to help. Here's a Fredette three. And picked up by Irving Walker. And here come the Gators. Tyus. Good find in Boynton for the triple. They just, made the, with the rebound. they just made two in a row, but they're only a 30% three point shooting team. There he goes again. That time, good defense by Boyd. I mean, he's getting into the rim. Parsons, good find in Warner. And that's a foul. Davies collapsing on him inside. Warner, a very smart player for this Gator ball club. Now, Jimmer Fredette is a guy right here who's going to come off the screen, and he does a really good job. He comes off the screen and then just takes the ball and goes to the basket. Again, B BYU shoots the ball so well from the perimeter, you're reluctant to drop down on a dribbler, create that open space. Quick foul went on Davies, who picks up his first. Shipman is in, and they're going to take out Irving Walker for the Florida Gators with Werner at the line. Here's a guy who started the last couple years. He's a senior now in this Gator ball club, but he's taken the unselfish attitude of coming off the bench, knowing that he can be more impactful coming in that role than as a starter. Uh, he's one of those guys who do whatever the coach wants as long as it helps the team. Really good start in this game for Florida. Who came in very confident in this game as yes. they go a little full court now on this BYU offense. Florida's a team that feels like they played a difficult schedule that they deserve to be. Oh, what a great swat inside by Tyus. And I really think that if you're Florida, that's what you want your defense to do. Force BYU to become penetrators off the dribble to the basket, and Tyus is just standing there waiting for him. Boyden's done a nice job so far on Fredette. He has to stay right in front of the dribbler on that... Uh, that defense for Florida. That's a good looking shot that's taken by Noah Hartsock. He's out of Bartlesville, Oklahoma, which is just a short drive from here. And the two and a half hour drive from Oklahoma City. The BYU big guys have to understand that they are going to get one on one opportunities. Parsons, another three. So another triple for the Gators, who have gone three of seven and are plus six points beyond the arc. Shipman is on Lloyd. Murphy goes on hard shot. They get a little switch, but they didn't switch, and they keep Parsons on his primary player, Abuda. Florida doing a good job preventing BYU from making side-to-side -side passes. Fredette and Hartsock tries to set a screen, and Fredette just has a great patience for when that screen will materialize. But you notice, Florida's really trying to play him straight up. If he's going to drive to the basket, they're not helping, so they're not allowing him to kick the ball back out for somebody to get a three. And to Fredette the other way. Good shot by Kenny Boynton. Leading score on this Florida team, and he leads him in three-point shots hit. As Parsons picks up the foul on the side. That's the first on Parsons of the Gators. And for that, we, we've talked about his three-point shooting, but here he just puts the ball down and goes to the basket. A little screen there by Noah Hartsock inside, but Fredette's one of those guys who just sees an opening and is able to squeeze through. Fredette has had six games this season of 33 points or more. Hartsock into the sophomore Murphy. And that's a foul. Murphy picks it up, 7.51 to play here in the first half. The Gators have led by as many as five. The Cougars by as many as two. Macklin goes 
comes out with the second personal foul for the Gators, but since he's been sitting on the Billy Donovan bench, a 13-6 run by the Florida Gators. Florida playing very well offensively, and this is a Florida team that has not been as potent offensive on the offensive end as some of Billy Donovan's past teams. Hartsock at the line. We told you before he grew up and played in the state of Oklahoma, and there's his mug on uh, family members here inside the arena in downtown Oklahoma City. Again, Bartlesville about two and a half hours away from the city. Uh, did you think they went to the DMV to get that picture? You know, they could have had a better picture of the kid. Wasn't too <laughs> Look at the picture. There he is with the, with the tongue sticking out. It's got to be some inside family thing. I'm sure it is. A lot of balance in the scoring for the Gators this afternoon. Now here's Florida going back to, or excuse me, BYU going back to the man-to-man. -man. And again, the Florida offense working very effectively. BYU's had a tough time guarding the screen and roll in the man-to-man. -man. And Florida's knocked down some three-point shots against the zone. So BYU right now scratching their heads, wondering how they have, how they should play. Parsons just came up with his fourth assist. Runner off the bench has got four. In fact, they've got three Florida players with four. They're two with five. We talk about the balance. There it is. Boy, good feed to Hartside. A nice rejection inside by Murphy. And here come the Gators the other way with Shipman and Parsons. And a great feed inside Murphy. Slide right by Tabanari. Kevin, the key so far has been the Florida Gators' ability to get the ball to the basket. They're scoring inside almost at will. And help that way because they're hitting the three-point shot. Plus six right now, the Gators in that category. So things inside have been given a little bit more breathing room as the Gators have their biggest lead this afternoon. We talked about BYU's ability to push, but watch Eric Murphy get down here underneath the basket as Florida pushes the ball up the court. An outstanding pass inside by Chandler Parsons. We talked about the versatility of Parsons, and he's showing you his ability at 6'9 to handle the ball in transition and pass the ball effectively. Shipman just came up with his first foul for four. Abuo will check out, and the freshman Tyler Hawes will come back in for BYU. And he just got the pass, and he's picked up by Parsons. Tabanari, Warner defending him. Off of BYU, six and a half to play here in the first half. And again, what you're not seeing from BYU, and Dave Rose is, knows he's not seeing and has to be a little concerned, that ball isn't moving from side to side with the same effectiveness that you've seen all year from BYU. Flew up Florida doing a nice job keeping the Cougars on one side of the court. Irving Walker on the wing. We talked about the bad. Here's a three. It's over for Dent. And as Hartsock and Murphy go after it, Murphy's going to pick up the foul for the Florida Gators. We talked about the scoring balance of the Gators. All five Florida starters are averaging double figures. And it's showing with the beginning scoring in this game today as Tavernari will now check out. And Miles will come back in for BYU. And there goes Murphy. He'll head to the sideline. And Tyus is back in for the Gators. 6-13 to play here in the first half. As Florida is shooting 58% and Brigham Young is shooting 43% from the floor. Florida has really done a nice job getting the ball to the basket. They've gotten easy shots, and that's why they're shooting such a high percentage. Donovan been talking about the offense of BYU yesterday. They said they're, they're kind of like a, a European team the way they play. Moving that ball, relying on the pass, and outside this is Lloyd. Michael Lloyd is a sophomore from Las Vegas, Nevada who has been playing well in three of the last five games, has scored 19, 18, and 11 points. So he's cranking it up at the right time. Warner by Hartsock. Walker keeps it alive. Step out of bounds. And the three-point shooting for the Gators this afternoon. And remember, this is a Florida team that only shoots about 31% from beyond the arc. But when BYU went to that zone, Florida made a pay. They knocked down three consecutive three-point baskets. That drove BYU out of the zone. Three turnovers by Walker today. A runner inside by Lloyd. And he puts it in. When isn't it interesting how as the season goes along, coaches sort of find guys, and Lloyd has been a big find recently, as you mentioned, for BYU. Well, as you know, you use the regular season to become what you're going to be at this time of the year. And it's taken that kind of time to figure out where he fits in. 
Wells had the switch on defense. Now Lloyd falls back on Boynton. Shipman with the shot clock down to 10. That's the lowest it's been for the Gators on offense today. Into Miles. Tennis. Miles. Pause. Boyd popping the three. And BYU has come back from seven down on an eight nothing run and put in their second triple this afternoon. It's an eight nothing run and Lloyd has scored all eight points in that run. He's come off the bench, knocked down two threes and a two. Parsons finds a quick double on him. And a foul goes on the Cougars. BYU. Running for the three, the Cougars. Well, BYU is a team that really likes to get up and down the court. We mentioned they average 83 points a game. Lloyd just goes and finds himself a spot behind the arc, and Haas does a great job getting him the ball. Haas picks up his first. Jackson Emery has come back on the floor. They take out Fredette. We'll mark this now at the 424 mark of this first half. Point. And Lloyd on him. Doubled by Miles. He ran out of room, and here comes Lloyd. Into Walker. Oh, my goodness, as he had a terrific clutch on this first half since coming off the bench. Would you say he's feeling it? Yes, four of four and ten points. Ten points in a row. BYU's on a 10-0 run, and he's got all ten. And that was a tough shot. Lloyd only averages four points a game off the bench. He's hit his four, and he's got the ten points and given BYU the lead. Ties in on Miles. Pretty play. That was a hard shot with very little room with which to work. Well, he got himself all the way underneath the basket, but was able to somehow get that ball spun around and back up in the goal. Ties with four. Pause. Emery. Junior from Alpine, Utah. Miles. Tyus Parsons. Hartzak. See, Parsons had to make a decision right there. Do I stay in the long shooter or do I go and double inside? He chose to double and was caught. And Billy Donovan doesn't want him to double inside because there's the shooters from outside. So Lloyd has been the story. He's come off the bench, gone four of four, penetrating here with a big-time layup, and the Cougars on top. And they'll get you caught up on the latest tournament news, plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. All coming up on the AT&T at the half. Points off turnovers, a big early game story. Cougars on top nine sit there. Particularly recently, that's what's gotten BYU back in the game. Miles with the job on time as he was going inside for the Gators. Lloyd Jr. spinning it the other way. Emery to Miles, setting the screen. Hawes over Parsons. A 14-2 run by the Cougars. With Fredette on the bench, by the way, Kevin. Tyus looking for the handle and out of bounds in 27 seconds on the clock. Fredette, who leads the Mountain West Conference in scoring, who has had his fingerprints on this game, but it's been the other players, like Hawes right here with that outside chain. And the Cougars on top. Florida led by seven, BYU by five. The Cougars set a school record for steals this season. It is showing, we mentioned this before, nine zip on points off turnovers for BYU. Yeah, Florida was doing pretty well early in the game when they're able to set their defense against the BYU offense. But recently, the Cougars have been able to get out running some open looks. Working on Miles. That has been a matchup we've watched here is Lloyd out of the blocks and a quick foul. And and the, the key behind this whole BYU run has been this guy right here, Michael Lloyd, who has done a great job coming off the bench. There's one of those steals, but he scored 10 points. He's hit a couple of threes. He's driven the ball to the basket, and he has keyed this BYU run, even though Fredette is on the bench. Well, he's just picked up his second personal foul for BYU. Two and a half to play in the half. The bench of BYU, by the way, has outscored the bench of Florida, 15 to 8. Parsons and the rebound by Jackson Emery. And Florida has stopped getting the ball inside. That's where they had the great success early, but they haven't been able to do it recently. Werner with a nice knockaway right there. Walker, Lloyd on him. Pause goes on Boynton. Weaving inside and travels. 
Once again, in the man-to-man, -man, BYU having a bit of difficulty guarding the penetration to the basket. Parsons just couldn't keep his pivot foot. Another turnover, the third right there for Parsons. Fredette back in the ball game, taking the place of Emery. So Lloyd and Fredette the backcourt. Fredette will be playing the two guard. Up front they got Miles, Hartsack, and Abua, who checks in for a second time in this first half. Warner is watching Hartsack. Good defense right there. Don't need to force that shot. Uh -uh. They plenty of time with which to work, too. More patience on the offensive side. Walker. Now those big guys aren't used to having such easy one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They're used to double teams. Walker wow. way outside over Lloyd. Now that's a, that's a three-point shot you can get any time in the shot clock. BYU is plus three in rebounding so far. I think Florida needs to try to punch it inside against BYU. There again, the BYU big guys making bad decisions. And Parsons. Off of the hands of Lloyd, and just five seconds <laughs> gone on the shot clock, so a lot of time with which to work here for the Gators and Coach Billy Donovan. Now, remember, Lloyd is a guy that was buried on the bench. Lamont Morgan for BYU hurt his knees, so they had to put Lloyd in, and he played so well, he earned himself a spot. But he's he's been the dominant figure in this game so far. This is a three-point try by Walker over Hartsock, who picks up the foul, and Boynton will be at the line for the Gators. Hartsock picks up his first personal foul. Well, Boynton is here, and remember, Boynton is a high-volume three-point shooter, but he doesn't really make a very high percentage. That is a bad foul. You send a kid to the free-throw line, where he's a 74% free-throw shooter. Boynton was a McDonald's kid. He was uh, the number 11th overall recruit in the country, a parade All-America from Pompano Beach, Florida. And when you take a look at some of the great players Florida has lost, here comes Tyus. He'll take the place of Murphy. Th that's one of the reasons why this program has not been able to keep up with those two national championship teams. They've got a lot of kids leave early in this program for the pros. Well, including those guys off those national championship teams, they've lost eight guys early. And it hasn't been that one. They've lost. They haven't lost eight bad players. No, it's been all their eight good best players, players. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> since 05. So it's miraculous they've been able to stay as buoyant as they have. 20 win seasons for 12 consecutive years for Billy Donovan. Boy, off the bench with the 10. For that, he's got eight. Good spin move on point. Warner with the rebound. It's a nice job to not foul him. He gets in there looking for the foul. And Florida has a chance to keep it for the last shot. Walker has it right now. Nice little recovery by Florida after BU, BYU hit him with that big run. That's a good point. 48% shooting for the Gators here in the first half. Walker slithering. Parsons, the three, Lloyd, the close, will not go, and that takes us to halftime. The first half, which saw the Gators lead by seven, BYU come back and lead by five. That brings us to a two-point game at the half. Lloyd, terrific. Off the bench, ten points. He averages four a game, but ten on a perfect four of four display in the first half for the Cougars. And that's the end of the first half with a two-point lead for BYU. We'll send you to Gray Gumble with the at and at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. BYU has lost seven consecutive first-round tournament games, and Florida has won 12. And here we go with... BYU, beginning with Hawes and Fredette, Miles, Emery, and Hartsock. That's the five for the Cougars on the floor. And look at this record when BYU is on top at halftime. That's a very thin halftime lead. It'll be interesting to see if Florida goes back to trying to get the ball inside. Hawes pops that up. He's got six. The lead is four. The big lead of BYU has been five. Florida has led by as many as seven. BYU has shot the ball very, very well recently. Parsons is in with a good-looking drive. Tynus and Macklin out there, too. Walker. See, Parsons is the guy I don't think BYU can guard. He's just too big and athletic. And has a good feel for the game. His passing has been key in the first half for the Gators. Macklin is in there, too. Only played five minutes in the first half. He had two quick fouls, scored four points. 
But when he is on, this is a much better Florida team. The defense by Parsons on Hawes. It's going to be hard for Hawes to shoot over Parsons, and he certainly can't get it to the basket against him. Miles with a good screen on Walker. Emery took the shot, and Tyus grabs the rebound for the Florida Gators. Parsons. Macklin back in the game. Remember, he picked up two early fouls and went out, although he was very effective early in the game. Two or two. Blanton. Who throws that away? We've right. seen this BYU team shoot well throughout the season. Well, and this is a perfect illustration. Look at those rankings. Now, one of the big keys has been that BYU has not been able to get to the free throw line. They're the number one team in the country in free throw shooting percentage. They only got to the line four times in the first half. And this guy, Fredette, didn't get to the line at all. And Boynton couldn't stay in front of him, but he misses right there. Now Fredette from the floor has gone four of ten. See, he's looking for the foul when he goes in there. And Florida's doing a good job not fouling. What about the turnovers now for Florida? Both their guards having trouble well, on this each end. time when they threw the ball, the referee, they threw it to his wide open <laughs> <laughs> and points off turnovers have been a story so far as Florida has gotten burned and we've seen BYU cash in for that point in defense and knocked it away and a foul called on Kenny Boynton the Gators leading scorer and he picks up his first personal foul right there so for dares at free throw shooting you were talking about for that will be at the line for Brigham Young in 32 games coming into this tournament he attempted 230 free throws and he is a 90 percent shooter from the free throw line he's now hit 34 consecutive free throws there is his brother TJ seven years older and it was what he did with them when the younger uh, Fredette was, was trying to learn the game. He put him through all kinds of drills and all kinds of different exercises, and he credits TJ, his older brother, with helping him get to where he is right now. Now, one of the drills they did is they went to the church, and Jimmer dribbled down the dark hallway of the church, and his brother would hide and jump out at him. See if he could make him lose the ball. <laughs> and his first name is Jimmer. Given name is James, and his mom called him Jimmer. And it's stuck. Irving Walker for three. Big shot. Walker nails it right there. That's his second triple this afternoon. Well, we talk about Florida and their struggles from beyond the three-point arc, but Walker shoots 36% out there. If he can get an open one, he's going to take it. Nice scoop inside by Fredent in the two Mountain West Conference tournament games. He had 75 points, 45 points in game one, and 30 points in game two. <laughs> and you can see he's just a scorer. He can create shots in a number of different ways. Kind of like, a, like a Steve Nash just keeps the dribble always going because he's always probing. That's defense inside by BYU, and here comes Fredette the other way. Into Macklin, and that is a tough shooter, but he slides in. And he scoops it up, surprise Macklin, and again, he's putting his body into Macklin, trying to draw the foul. Well, he averages just under 22 points a game. And Fredette now has 14. That is a game high. Lloyd Jr. comes off the bench with 10 in under two minutes. They double Macklin, and that double turns it over. Hawes, Jackson Emery, Fredette, a wide open three. Miles climbing the ladder, working on Werner, who just checks in. That's a Florida Gator foul with 16.32 to play. Well, now, Fredette is a pretty good three-point shooter, but he's really good with the ball. He just steps right past Walker and scores, and this time he's got Macklin. He just scoops right under Macklin, sort of surprised him with the quickness of that shot. Werner picks up his first foul. Older brother approved here in Oklahoma City. He's taught him well. Well, both the Southeastern Conference and the Mountain West Conference have four teams apiece from those various locations in the tournament. You can see what Kansas has done. And they're on the march to do. Marching to Indianapolis, the number one overall seed. They're going to be playing here later on tonight against Lehigh from the Patriot League. As you take a look at Billy Donovan, his team in the first half has turned it over four times in six possessions. And they're turning it over, and that allows BYU to get out and run. Florida's had their best success when they've been able to set their defense against the BYU offense. Fredette has been tough so far in the first three and a half minutes of the second half. He's put in six points, a game high 14, the best defender on the Gators now on him. Werner. Now a little bit taller guy on him. And Macklin gets it. Irving Walker. Macklin with the screen. And part
Parsons is picked up by Hawes. The ball rotation and good. Macklin, who's gone two of two, draws the double again. Well, they're double teaming the floor to big guys because they're not really very good passers. And there, Walker draws the foul from Jackson Emery. Number two on Emery. Well, Emery is considered to be Dave Rose's best perimeter defender. He does a really nice job moving his feet. He's got very, very good lateral quickness, but not quick enough to stay with Walker on that occasion. I think Parsons has to be more involved. Right there. there he is right there. <laughs> Just as you see it, he's now got eight. And he's put in a couple baskets here to start the second half as Hawes was taking it inside. And the Florida goes on Parsons for the second time. Parsons with the move. Dan's right. He's got to get on track here in the second half. Here between BYU and Florida, both teams shooting over 50% from the four. Points off turnovers. BYU cashing in plus 10. Parsons has been the key player for the Gators down the stretch of the regular season. You think he's got to be important here this afternoon? I really do. He just recently passed up a wide open three. I don't think he can do that. You saw him drive the ball to the basket. I think he's the one guy out there that BYU has the most trouble guarding. And so he's got to take advantage of the mismatches that he's got. Six of eight free throw shooting now for Brigham Young. The number one free throw shooting team in college basketball this season. Warner is picked up by Hawes. And the double on top. You said the big guys can't pass that well. They were caught with another turnover right there. Well, Warner's a pretty good passer, but that was just a very weak effort. No, very, tried to make a very, very long bounce pass to Macklin underneath, and BYU smelled it out. Pause. Miles set a screen for Dent. He just keeps probing for that. He basket. does, and the, and the triple never stops, and that's the result. He's got 16. He's just given Brigham Young their biggest lead today. But again, Florida reluctant to go double team him or have a guy come over to try to take the charge because he's such a good passer. They don't want to give one of those three point shooters the opportunity. Macklin, Parsons, Tyus, late close by Hartsock. Macklin gobbles it in, puts it back up and through. Now he's got six, and Macklin has gone three of three. When Florida has had success, they have had the success on the inside. They need to get back to that. Still plenty of time left in the game. You don't need to settle for threes. Here's Fredette, the 13th all-time leading scorer for the Cougars. Gotta watch the five-second count. Miles the screen. That time, Macklin did step in front and make it stop. Shot clock at five. Emery over Werner. Good defensive stand by the Florida Gators. And Jimmer Fredette, he starts over in this area. Oh, excuse me, this is Fredette here. He starts at the elbow and watches. He just weaves his way inside. Again, Alex Tyus does not come and help out. But Macklin gets the ball on the inside, and he has done very well when he's been able to get it in there, whether it's on an offensive rebound. There's a look at Fredette. You can see what he's done in the second half so far. With only six minutes gone, Hawes has left. Lloyd has come in the game. He took over that first half with 10 points in under two minutes for BYU. Parsons is out. Shipman has come in for the Gators. Shipman's got it right now. Tyus. Close it up on hard side. And Macklin has put himself underneath. Foul! He's gone four of four. He's got eight. Every time he's touched the ball inside like that, he's found the deuce. And you got to give a lot of credit there to Alex Tyus. Tyus only has 14 assists on the season. Tyus takes the ball into the middle, and Macklin does what a big guy's supposed to do. He puts himself in scoring position, and Tyus is able to find him inside. Nice play. Miles picks up the foul. Here's the Georgetown transfer Macklin. He played on that final four team a couple years ago. A couple years under John Thompson, the third team up in Washington. Comes to Florida. And he has been a godsend up front for this team that's been hurt by players, good players, leaving early for professional basketball. Another defensive stand by Florida. Boynton and Warner. Parsons out there. Macklin has been hot here in the second half, and Shipman is in the game. That's the Gator 5. Quick double that doubled every time Macklin has touched it here in the second half. And picked up by Lloyd out there with Fredette. Hearts up. Jackson and Miles. Well, Miles has to, when, when 
Miles sets a screen. He's got to go to the basket. He's stepping way outside and allowing Macklin to cover up the drivers without worrying about Miles. Lloyd overshipped and that was a three. And picked up by Parsons back in the contest, taking the place of Tyus. Quick hands. Lloyd, three on one, scoops it to Fredette. The lead is four. It's been as big as five for BYU. The Gators have led by as many as seven. And Fredette has ten of BYU's last 12 points in the second half. Credit that one to Emery. Great quick hands. Nice little floater inside. Won't go for Boynton. And as he's fighting for the loose ball, there is a foul. Hartsock was in there pushing and shoving for the Cougars. And Miles picks up his second. And there's Jimmer Ferdad. He's just going to go down in the lane here. And Lloyd is going to take the ball into the middle. This is a well-executed fast break. And Ferdad uses the left hand to get past Werner. Werner not a shot blocker. Ferdad knows that. And he takes it hard to the basket. So at the free throw line is Poynton. The freshman leading scorer on this team recruited by Billy Donovan as we see uh, a host of trend of kids now coming in the game. Tapper Murray comes in for BYU. Eric Murphy coming in along with Tyus for Florida. Murphy had a real solid first half, made a couple of buckets. And that will dribble in, bringing the Gators to within two. Florida's doing a nice job hanging in the game. BYU has made a couple of runs at him, but Florida has answered. Now Murphy's going to get a foul called for a push. Three-point game. They had uh, the wrong score, and you can see that they've got a foul. It's called on Murphy. That is his third for Coach Billy Donovan, whose plan defensively today was to knock away the sideline passing. Good pass by Lloyd, and they kick it back outside. And Jackson Emery. That's it. Lloyd has to take that shot, but he didn't catch the ball cleanly and allowed the Florida defense time to come and guard it. Boy, when you get your big guy wide open like that, you'd like him to catch the ball and just lay it in. 50% shooting for the Gators and 51% shooting for BYU. They quickly double ties. They've doubled on the block the entire second half, and here's a three on two led by Lloyd. The two guards back for the Gators. And being run over down low was Irving Walker. And That's Lloyd it. taking it inside. That's actually a break for Florida because Lloyd did not execute very well in that transition. 11.46 to play in the second half. Walker picks up his first for the Gators. And Hensborough, of course, is the uh, younger brother of Tyler Hensborough, college basketball's player of the year. Thank you, Greg. Goes at Mississippi State and transfers to Notre Dame. Here comes Parsons back in the game for Shipman. Plus 12, plus 13 points actually now. BYU. Off the turnovers committed by Ford. And that Notre Dame uh, Old Dominion game, a lot of people really have a lot of respect for Old Dominion. They figured that would be a tough contest for the Fighting Irish. There's Jacob Pullen, one of those two dynamic guards for the Wildcats of Kansas State. They'll play next against the 15th seed Mean Green of North Texas. BYU is led here by as many as five. Florida has led by as many as seven. You see the turnover story and the points off turnovers. See, they got to put the ball in the hands of Parsons close to the basket because Jackson Emery's too small. Can't guard him in there. Walker over Lloyd for the three. Emery with the rebound. That's his third. Tabinari. From Brazil and over to the For the three! A big time shot outside. Tavanari, a senior who has just given the Cougars of BYU their biggest lead this afternoon. He's one of the all-time leaders at BYU in three-point shooting. You certainly can't give him that much room. Here's Parsons. The collapse on him. He's got to get the ball down in the low post. He's got to get himself in the low post. He's matched up against Lloyd. He's got about a seven-inch height in there. Tavanari defending Tyus. Murphy gets his hand on it, makes a move on Davies. Tyus with an offensive rebound with an Emory foul for BYU. Good looking three moments ago. Well, wow, Tavernari, look, he's almost out of bounds, and Tyus is a step away from him. When Tavernari's in the game, you have to be right on him. 
because he will shoot very, very quickly. Macklin has come in for Tyus. Macklin will set the screen. Lloyd will uh, readjust and works on Walker. Walker, the point guard, has no assists in the game today and four turnovers. He's been a tough afternoon for him. But that tries to launch the shot by point. And here comes Fredette with a game high, 18 points. 12 from Lloyd. No one in double figures so far for the Florida Gators. And we're halfway through the second half. Crossover by Fredette. Oh, what a move as he works inside on Kenny Boynton. He's got a game high 20. He averages 22 a game. He was falling down. <laughs> Billy Donovan thinks he carried the ball first and then walked, and that's what he's telling the officials. Murphy with the screen, 7 up and run right now by BYU. Here is Parsons and Macklin. They double him again to push him outside. And then do a nice job reacting back to their own men. The inside guys, Murphy, Macklin, Tyus, are not really good passers. You can double team them and get turnovers. Murphy a screen for Walker, pointing with four on the shot clock, the triple. Off of Emery. The new shot clock and Florida's ball. Boy, and the Florida Gators are going to see this in their sleep. Jim Fredette crossing over and going to the basket. This is a dynamite crossover, and Boynton just can't stay in front. Walker with a NBA type three. Tavanari is there to bring it back and numbers the other way with a three on two. Here is Emery hoisting the triple. Down it goes! Another three point shot by the Cougars. A 10 0 run. And their biggest lead this afternoon. Donovan will call time. And BYU with a record number of wins, 29, the seventh seed out of the Mountain West Conference. And here's the secondary break. This is Emory. He's just going to go down and find the open spots. He, they throw the ball to him. Taverneri does a great job getting it to him, and they're just lining up and knocking him down. When Florida has been at their best, they've attacked inside on the BYU interior. Yeah, they sure have, but BYU's made a adjust nice adjustment in the second half, double-teaming those, those low-post players, forcing them to throw it back out or turn it over. Need a better passer down in the low post, and my pick would be Chandler Parsons. Another double on Macklin, forcing it outside. Murphy found a double on him. Walker, Murphy. And Murphy's got six. That was great ball movement by the Florida Gators. That's how you beat that double team. You keep the ball movement, and then a guy like Walker attacks the basket, and the defense can't adjust in time. That's Walker's first assist of the game. If you can't attack by passing it inside, you got to move the ball from side to side and then attack the inside with the dribble. And that's what Walker did on that occasion. Tavanari picks up his second personal foul. And Murphy gets the three-point play. And Warner's going to check back in, and Murphy, the sophomore, will check out. Team high score. Fredette will take it the other way. Into Pointon. And 8.25 to play now here in the second half. NCAA March Madness on demand is streaming every game from this NCAA championship online for free. Watch any game from the tournament live at NCAA.com. That and Boynton defending. Macklin comes up with a rebound, his third. Macklin averages five rebounds a game and 10 points a game. There's the speed inside of Boynton. Right around for that. Now he's going to go right around for depth, but he did a great job stopping inside and going straight up with that shot. That was a marvelous play. 11, as you see, for Boynton. Davies and Macklin is on him. Lloyd slashing inside into Macklin. What a spectacular game by Michael Lloyd. 14 points, he averages four. He's been terrific off the bench today. Count that for two at the other end. And the Gators find the deuce inside. 
Boy, a nice job by Florida. They're trying to speed up the game to get some easy baskets in transition. There is a lot of time. There's a lot of time left. The Gators still have a shot. Walker gets his 10th point. 728 to play here in the second half. BYU on top. Boynton with the 13. Getting that last basket to go in four or five from the free throw line this afternoon. And once again, Kevin, Billy Donovan's guys have shown some resilience here. They were down by 13 and they battled back in the game. A couple of runs by BYU, but Florida hasn't folded the tents and gone home. They keep battling away. The Gators are 9 to 13 from the free throw line this afternoon, and the Cougars of BYU are 8 of 10. Florida has forced a couple of turnovers here lately, and that would be a pretty good strategy. Get some easy baskets. There's an offensive foul. So after Boynton gets the three-point play, now with 14 points in the game for the Florida Gators, there's a turnover right there. Davies just picked up his third foul for the Cougars. Walker screened by Warner. A lot of traffic inside. That's what this Gator offense has finished every time they try to take it in there. Tabinari. Had the ball, a quick timeout was taken by Davies, and BYU will hold it, and 6.54 to play. Seven consecutive first-round losses by Brigham Young. Can they win today here in Oklahoma City? You see the 53% shooting by BYU, and the leading scorers, for that who averages 22 points a game, has got 20 so far. But the key stat of the game there for Dave Rose's guys, the ability to generate turnovers and score points off those turnovers. Billy Donovan needs to see more of that from his team as we go down the stretch of this game. Davies the screen for net for three. He's the third all-time leading three-point shooter for Brigham Young. And he hadn't made one yet no, today. He right, scored all his points driving to the basket. Good point. The athletic Davies inside. That one is defending. Tavanari over here. Back to three, and that sails away. Well, plus 14 points off turnovers, and uh, we've seen the Cougars do that well this afternoon for Coach Dave Rose. Well, they're doing a nice job. They're taking the ball away and turning it around into offense. The double team in the post has been effective. Ford has a couple of times tried to force things. This three by Parsons. Point and he puts in the triple from right outside. Boy, and here they come again. That was a great pass by Werner. He got the offensive rebound and immediately kicked it out for the open three. And you see the run by the Gators backing in as Davies outside for Lloyd. Parsons picks up a foul inside for the Florida Gators with 6.04 to play in the second half. That's the third on him. Parsons with the miss and watch Werner. He gets the ball and immediately kicks it back outside and Boynton has been very effective from three point range today. You know you don't hear a lot about the Mountain West Conference and a lot of people I think disregard the strength of it but you're a fan of the conference and think they've got some depth and they've got some strength. Well they really do. I mean four teams in the tournament. New Mexico's been in the top 15 most of the season. UNLV who is here at our site. We'll see them later tonight. They've had an excellent season. BYU has been in the top 20 for most of the year. And then San Diego State uh, won the conference tournament and became the fourth team in. So it is a very strong league. They've got good depth. Mark Zock has come in for Tavanar. Those were two pretty big free throws right one. there That's... because Florida was really on a nice little roll. That was a mistake by Parsons to push Emory out of the way on that rebound. Good screen by Warner opening up the shot for Boynton. That's another triple. So the three beginning to fall for the Florida Gators. He's now hit three, and Boynton has put in a Gator high 20 points this afternoon. And what that's going to do is open up the inside once again. For that. Oh, what a move, and Boynton bit. And there you see the three. Holy Toledo. That's what he does as well as anybody in the country. That quick dribble and then rising up for the three. 
Fredette with a game high, 23 points. One or another screen. Walker will launch. And a rebound inside. Picked up by Emery. Gets it out to Fredette. How about BYU answering a triple with a triple of their own? Davies with the screen. Boynton fights through that. Fredette with a myriad of moves. Well, that was a force that time. Really good defense. That was Boynton in there who made him give, take a bad shot without fouling him. Fredette is 10 of 20. Now, Fredette, I think, sometimes gets in there and he makes a move and he expects to get fouled. And when he doesn't get fouled, the shot doesn't look very good. Boynton has the last 11 points for the Florida Gators. He has it again, teeing up another three. Kaboom! Boynton puts in another triple. And he has caught fire, 7 of 14, four threes, and a Gator high 23 points, the only Florida player in double figures today. And as he can catch fire, he can be a very, very streaky shooter, and he's shooting the ball with a great deal of confidence right now. Parsons with some good defense on Emory. Boy, and Boyton is doing a nice job. Now, Boyton, he is dragging himself off the court. He is really working hard on defense against Fredette, and he has been doing all the heavy lifting on the offensive end with threes. Kenny Boynton, the freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida, the leading scorer for the Gators, averaging 13 a game, has put in 23 this afternoon, including the last 14 in under four minutes for Florida, resuscitating them after they were down by 13 points. Here is one of the most recruited kids in high school basketball, McDonald's All-America, the 12th overall rated player in the country. And he's over on the bench trying to resuscitate himself. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes Florida plays so hard on defense, it takes its toll on the offensive end. Well, Boynton there, you see, he's, he's going to catch his breath. But he has been working so hard against Fredette that sometimes a guy Good who's point. a scorer like that, you can take off a couple of possessions on the defensive end, but not when you're guarding Fredette. Shipman, who just comes in, taking the place of Boynton, has picked up his second personal foul. Here is Fredette at the free throw line, where today he has gone three of three. He has now hit 36 consecutive free throws, dating back into the regular season. On Boynton immediately off the yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the last 14 for the Gators. And Fredette has had a 17-point second half for BYU. He's been terrific as well. So Boyd for, comes in for Fredette. He's got to catch his breath. Well, he's got to catch his breath for the stretch drive. Because this game looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. Back on the screen. Parsons with the drive. Counted for two and a foul. He comes in hard with his 10th point. And 3.56 to play. Fourth foul on Davies. They're doing it outside and inside. This time, it's Chandler Parsons for two. He has scored 14 points in three and a half minutes for the Florida Gators. He's knocked down his last three three-point shots, and he's been doing a great defensive job against Jimmer Fredette as well. Dave Rose, his team has sort of lost a little bit of patience. They've rushed some shots, and after having great success early in the second half with double team in the post, the Florida Gators have really gotten moving on the offensive end. They've gotten open threes and knocked them down. So Boynton is detonating right now. Lloyd did this in the first half. He put in 10 on a perfect 4 of 4 display in under two minutes for BYU. Parsons with the free throw. Fredette picks up his first personal foul for BYU. And this is a real good defensive adjustment by Dan Werner. He just stands there and waits for him. The camera, you can see number 21 just standing there waiting for him. It's the first time Fredette has been called for that offensive foul. Another BYU turnover, and that's what has plagued Dave Rose's team here in the last few minutes. So Florida trailed 59 to 46 after Emory's three. Florida's gone on a 29 run since. And they have not turned the ball over, which has been just as important as the shooting of Boynton. See, now you notice there's no double team against the post. Good point. Mm -hmm. He drives in across the lane. And Macklin has been tough. He's got 11. He's been perfect. Five of six from the field. Approaching three to point. 
Hartford in with 25. Hartzell. Emery was coming off a screen by Miles. Walker staying with Lloyd. Shot clock is at nine. Miles the screen, the switch on defense. The big man has to guard outside and for that, can't get it to go. And that was a great switch on defense by the Gators. Dave Rose really frustrated. Florida's strategy working pretty well. Here, there's no double team because they've been making threes and Macklin's able to spin into the lane. He's been able to do about anything he's wanted to when they haven't double teamed him in there. Point. Corner the screen, the switch for the lead, the three. Right between the eyes. Boynton has been terrific. A career high, 28 points in this first round match in the NCAA tournament. Miles the screen, the switch on D. See, when there's a switch like that, Miles has to go to the basket. He's got to make himself a scoring threat, or Florida can ignore him. Inside, Hartsock carves his way for two. And that is a good play inside by Hartsock. All game long, we've seen Florida play one-on-one -on -one against the BYU post guys, and when they've been patient and aggressive, they've been able to score as well. Back from the screen. Boy, Macklin was open, and he wanted the ball. Both teams are shooting about 51% from the field. Warner, Parsons, switch on defense. The three by Parsons. Chandler Parsons puts in the triple. He's got 14. Now, plus nine points, the Gators shooting beyond the arc this afternoon over BYU. What a display of three-point shooting here in the second half. Oh, what a shot outside. A terrific-looking three, and Jackson Emery puts it down. His second three today. That's what you call a deep three right there, and that was a <laughs> critical, critical shot for BYU. Fantastic long-range shooting by the Gators and the Cougars. And that was over the 6'9", Chandler Parsons. That was not an easy shot. But how about Florida's three-point shooting? Coming in only 31% on the year from beyond the three-point arc. But Boynton hits a deep three. That's his fifth three of the ball game. And the next three is Chandler Parsons. We talked about Parsons getting more involved inside. Well, he's decided to get more involved outside as he knocks down a three. And that's his second three of the game. Seven consecutive first round losses by BYU. This is their fourth consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament. On the other hand, the Florida Gators have got 12 consecutive tournament wins, but this is the first time they've been back to the tournament since those two consecutive national championships. The last time they were here was in 07. When they were down by 13, the Florida Gators, they were turning the ball over because BYU was very effective in double teaming the pass inside. And Billy Donovan called a timeout. And during that timeout, he made an adjustment. And they started moving the ball quickly from side to side, forcing the BYU defense to move, and then attacking off the dribble. And that adjustment really got the Florida offense rolling. And Boynton has been terrific. And of course, it's helped that Boynton has made the shots. Boynton has just been terrific here in the second half, knocking down threes. He only had one in the first half. He's hit four in the second half. And that's what makes that all. You move and move and move. You get an open shot when you knock it down. That gives everybody confidence. And as a team, the Gators have made five of their last seven threes. And Dan, even maybe more importantly than that, they've had no turnovers over the last six minutes. Walker. Parsons. Emory defends. Macklin will take it in hard. That's an offensive foul. And they doubled him there. The Hartsock rolled over to help. And Hartsock has not played very much in this second half, but he just made a big basket and just gets himself in position. He establishes himself in the low post. And Macklin runs over. You can see the frustration on Macklin's face. You got to stop and either shoot the jump shot or pass the ball out. You're not going to run over anybody. Tough and for that. 
Roy, along with Jackson Emery, and Hunt shot the five out there for the Cougars. An important thing here is the BYU offense has to be more than just Jimmy for them. Mm -hmm. They've got to get other guys involved. They've had some success going inside. And Lloyd has been a good guy. He's got 14 points. That might be an option for Dave Rose and BYU. Screen by Hartson for Dick. And Boynton right on him. And the shot clock is down to 12. For Dick. Rebound by Mecklen inside. What about the defense of the Florida Gators and Boynton? Has had his hands full on both ends of the floor. Boynton really worked hard that time to prevent Fredette from getting an easy shot. Fredette got to the basket and he got a shot, but it was an extremely difficult shot. Macklin now a 58% free throw shooter at the line. Emery picks up his fourth personal foul. He's got two shots, though. That was the 10th team foul. Yep. One of one from the line this afternoon. Now Macklin has got 11 points, and when he scores in double figures, this team, especially in Southeastern Conference play, was terrific. All part of the nine wins involved when he was in double figure score. Raiders defense has been tightening their screws here in the second half. For that. Boynton defends. And Fredette slips in right there and ties it at 75. He's got 27. And Florida can hold it for the last shot. Shot clock is off. Walker. Florida's got two timeouts. They take one right there. BYU has one. So now each team with a single timeout and 18.8 to play here in the second half. BYU led by 13. The Gators have clawed their way back in this one. And this has been the best BYU offense. Jimmer Fredette going to the basket, makes a good stop, and then flips it up there with the left hand. That's a basket, obviously, that BYU desperately had to have. And now it'll be very interesting to see what Billy Donovan sets up. He has shown in the second half they've been able to throw the ball inside to Macklin, so they've established the inside very well here recently. But Parsons and Boyden have done an outstanding job shooting the three. I wouldn't be surprised to see Walker get the ball, make some kind of a penetrating move, and try to find an open guy out on the perimeter. And like you said, there is no shot clock and just under 19 seconds to play, so they can't hold the ball the entire time. Well, what you want to do if you're Florida is you want to shoot the ball so that there's no way that BYU gets another possession. If you were down one, you'd want to shoot the ball in a situation where you might have a chance to get a rebound and score off the rebound. But in this situation, Florida wants to shoot the ball, so it's the very last shot of the game. So if they make it, obviously they win. If they miss it, we go to overtime. You don't want BYU to have another opportunity here. Points off turnovers fueling the Cougars of BYU earlier in this game, but Florida has not been turning the ball over, and thus they have been having quality offensive possessions and not giving it back to the Cougars. We've seen the big man, Macklin, who only played five minutes in the first half and was two of two, star in the second half. He's been terrific with his eight points, but the story has been the freshman, Kenny Boynton. One of the most highly recruited players in high school basketball a season ago has come in and put in 26 for Billy Donovan's Florida Gators. And remember, during the course of the season, Chandler Parsons made two game-winning plays. So he's not unfamiliar with having the ball in his hands in these situations. Well, it'll be on Walker. Abuel has come in to work on point. Parsons picked up by Lloyd. Two seconds. Parsons with the miss. Timeout by BYU. And I think they got the timeout before... The horn sounded, the clock evaporated, and the light went on. Let's see what they have called. If they put any extra time on, they will go and take a look at the replay. As BYU used their final timeout as we see our clock. The shot is missed. There's the rebound. Now he's calling timeout. timeout, but when does the official, it's not when he calls timeout, exactly. it's when the official recognizes it. So clearly he's calling, he gets the rebound. There's 1.4. Clearly he's now calling timeout at 1.1. But here's the, the, the officials. You see anybody with their hands up? At about 0.9, 9 cents. Right, yep, there the hand yep. comes up. 
The hand came up at about five or four. Point five or point four. Let's see if we can nail it down. Well, if it's point four or more in college basketball, you have the chance to catch and shoot. Obviously, you can't do anything else. If it's less than point four, if it's point three or less, then it has to be a tip. So this is very important here. Can do, will they put enough time back on the clock that BYU has the opportunity to catch it and shoot it, or do they have to tip it? Clearly, it's four, but they may make it point five. We will see as we have the seventh seeded Cougars of BYU from the Mountain West Conference against number 10 Florida out of the Southeastern Conference. Again, it's not when you call timeout. Look at him right here. He's calling the timeout, but that's not the key. It's when you are given the timeout. The referees have to see it, recognize it, blow the whistle, and call the timeout. I would say point five, but we'll see what they have decided. Smart move by Jackson Emery, the junior. In some conferences around the country, they have a little timing pack mm -hmm. that they wear where they blow the whistle, and as soon as they blow the whistle, the clock stops. But here, Kevin, you're right. They're going to put point five back on the clock. Well, so this has to be a very, you got to catch it and shoot it. You don't have time to catch it. It's not a, a Christian Leitner situation where you can catch it and turn and dribble. You have to catch it and shoot it. Well, if you were Dave Rose, as we take one more look at this, I would throw, would the ball you throw it to, to Jonathan Taverneri and have him shoot it. Who just came off the bench. Again, it's not when you call the timeout, it's when it's acknowledged. Looks like they're going to try to get it to Jimmer Fredette, run him toward the basket. Good if it goes, and overtime. Cavanari was the guy, and you called it. And that sends us to overtime in the first round of the first game of the NCAA tournament. The madness is back in March. We start overtime with the Southeastern Conference Florida Gators against the BYU Cougars, and the winner of this will take on our next game's winner, the second-seeded Kansas State Wildcats against the Mean Green of North Texas, the 15th seed out of Denton, Texas. Billy Donovan has to be so pleased with the way his team didn't fold up after being behind by 13 points. They really played a marvelous game after falling behind 59-46. to 46. And the key, as you mentioned, Florida stopped turning the ball over. Dave Rose, a little frustrated, I think, with his guys. They showed some impatience coming down the stretch. So this is the fourth consecutive year that BYU has been in the tournament, but they've got seven consecutive losses dating back to 1993 in the first round. And we're in overtime. Boynton with 26 and a 14 point stretch in three and a half minutes. And this is Walker for three. Fredette tried to close him. Tyus got a hand on it. Macklin punches it back up and in. He's got 14. Right, keep in mind now that BYU is going with a little bit smaller lineup. Hartsock and Tavernari playing the inside positions. With Lloyd and Fredette and Tavernari from outside. Tyus was defending and grabs the loose ball, and Jackson Emery is the fifth Cougar on the floor. You know, once again, one of the BYU inside guys, this time Hartsock had a wide open shot, but couldn't catch the ball cleanly. Horton for three, defended by Lloyd. Parsons out there as well, Tyus and Macklin. Parsons, the five out there for the Gators, that's a Tavernari three. Here comes Irving Walker. Works by Lloyd, flies inside. They'll go to the line with an accelerating move. Well, Macklin has been so strong inside for the Florida Gators, particularly in the second half. The tip by Tyus, and Macklin just stays on the board. And again, Macklin and Tyus with a sizable height advantage on the interior. Davies for BYU is in foul trouble. Miles has been ineffective, so you've got Tavernari and Hartsock playing inside, a little bit small. First free throws now being put up by Irving Walker. Cougars came in having won three consecutive games out of the Mountain West and the Florida Gators out of the Southeastern Conference had lost four of their last five by a combined 18 points. 
but both felt very confident coming into today. For a lot of the second half, the BYU offense has become really one-dimensional. It's simply been Jim or Fredette. Davis is in. Matt been watching Fredette. Very congested inside. Out of bounds. As they tried to call time, and Davies was falling to the floor as he was trying to get his hands together to call the time. Well, Fredette drives to the basket. The ball's knocked away. Look, there's four Gators around him, and he's still trying to shoot the ball. Now, you cannot, by rule, call a timeout when you're falling out of bounds. So that's why that ball went back to the Gators. And this is a huge defensive possession for BYU. I think they have to get a stop right here. Florida's biggest lead today has been seven personals right down the lane, and that's a travel. Well, we know the defense has gotten forward to this far, but they have flexed their offensive muscles this afternoon. Well, they've been making threes. They've made nine three-point baskets. They, they come into the game shooting 31% from beyond the arc. They shot 41% during regulation. Defense is fine, but eventually you have to score, and that's what the Gators have been able to do in the second half. And for that, point is on him. Tyus is defending Hartsock. Rebound by Parsons. Gets up there, snatches his fifth rebound today. Now Hartsock with a fadeaway jump shot that time over the outstretched arms of Tyus. BYU's big guys need to get, take, get the ball and take it to the basket, not the fallaway jump shot. Florida was down by 13 points. Comes back to tie it at 75 at the end of regulation. And again, the Cougars really need a stop right here. Shot clock is down to nine. Walker defended by Fredette. Rejected by Fredette. Picked up by Davies. Both teams expending a lot of energy on the defensive end. Lloyd with the pirouette inside. And that is a foul on the perimeter as he was slashing in. Lloyd has been terrific. He had that great span in the first half. Ten points in under two minutes. Boy, Lloyd gets out very quickly and he's got Boynton <laughs> backpedaling in so he makes that spin move. My heavens. <laughs> Not a good free throw shooter. Although he's made both his attempts today. For the number one free throw shooting team in college basketball. Moy from Las Vegas. Hawes will come back in for Emmer. Here comes Warner back in for the Gators and he'll take the place of Tynes. You know, on some teams, 61% from the free throw would be okay, but not on a team that shoots 77 overall. <laughs> and you see the free throw shooting by both teams. Boy, those are some big, big free throws. BYU, by the way, just to wrap up that free throw story, started 0-2 from the free throw line this afternoon. They have gone 14 of 14 since. 14 straight at the strike. Warner trying to set a screen, getting some breathing space for Walker. Parsons gets a screen from Matt, trying to pick and roll. It evaporates. Out the way, out of bounds. Off Brigham Young, two minutes to play in overtime and 14 seconds on the shot clock. You know, the last couple of possessions, Fredette has done an outstanding job defensively against Irving Walker. But do you think that's taken his the toll on his offensive game? Well, you know, I don't know. I think Florida's done a great job just harassing him the entire game. So my answer would be no. I think it's the Florida defense that has bothered his offense. Walker maneuvers for the long two. Warner knocks it away. What a heady play by Dan Warner, the senior. Now, how many times have we seen him do that in this game? A lot. Now, he's not going to get credit for that rebound, but his team has the possession because he smacked the ball to one of his teammates. That's been his whole season. Those intangibles, those things. Oh, and a turnover right there by Boynton. Lloyd will try to penetrate. And Boynton clobbers him, and down goes Lloyd. And with 132 to play. Boynton will pick up the foul for the Florida Gators and assess number four. Now that's really unfortunate for Boynton. He has played so well this afternoon, and he just he just lost the ball. And even though that's his fourth foul, I don't think that's a bad foul in that situation. He didn't let him score the basket. He makes a 60% free throw shooter earn him from the line. Boyd gets the free throw, and redshirt sophomore, redshirted last season. And he has emerged over the last five games, and Three of the last five, 19 points against New Mexico, 18 points against Utah, 11 against Nevada, Las Vegas, and today exploding. 
That's got to be a misprint in their notes. He, a guy who shoots it like that can't be a 60 he's got, eight, he's got 18 points today, and he is really on a roll for the Cougars. Parsons got the great entry pass from Walker. From the doorstep, puts in his second try. And Parsons puts in his 16th point, and the Gators go up by two. Thousand for Nick. Boynton on for Depp. Davies picked up by Mackey. More defense by Florida. Van Loy gets the loose ball with another spin move and puts it down over Walker. He's got 20. And that is a career high, and it couldn't come at a better time for Michael Lloyd Jr. and for BYU. And back and forth we go. Parsons gets the <laughs> offensive rebound, and then it's Lloyd on the other end. We said they needed somebody in addition to Fredette. Well, okay, it's Lloyd. Each team with the timeout as we reset our game. Our end of regulation score was 75 apiece. Dave Rose has brought his BYU team to meet Billy Donovan's Gator team of the University of Florida. Lloyd of BYU has scored the last six Cougar points. Here at 81, here comes Irving Walker. Walk on a screen, the quick double on Parsons. But they've done a nice job preventing Parsons from turning the corner. Walker, corner, the lead try here from three. Oh, and a great steal by Borton. What a terrific steal on Forget by Kenny Boynton. Now again, they have the opportunity to get the final shot, and Billy Donovan is gonna call a timeout. And that is the last timeout for the Florida Gators with BYU having one left, 19.4. The Gators in their second overtime game this season, and for Dave Rose and his Cougars of BYU, this is the first overtime game they have played. As you see, a reset, and the Gators will have the ball, and no timeouts. Boynton with the steal seconds to go. That was just a great play by Boynton, who's made so many good plays today. Now, once again, it's the same strategy as at the end of regulation. Florida wants to make sure they get the last shot. No opportunities for BYU. No shot clock. That's the time remaining in our overtime. Parsons. They're going to stay on him. Overtime number two in Oklahoma City in our first game of the tournament. We're tied at 75 at the end of regulation. We're tied at 81 at the end of overtime number one. The Gators and the Cougars on CBS. On CBS, we got two survivors here through one overtime. And we go to our second here in Oklahoma City. Well, we've had two survivors, Kevin, but certainly no villains, all heroes here today. Billy Donovan's guys now have had two opportunities to win the game on the last shot in regulation and in overtime, and you have to wonder now if that's going to come back and bite them. Well, the two stars of this game, Boynton and Fredette, scoreless in that overtime after starring in regulation. I thought Florida forced a couple of shots in that overtime. They weren't as patient moving the ball from side to side, making that BYU defense work. Walker is out there with Macklin and Parsons. Boynton and Tyus, the Gator five. That is a three by Walker. That's looking rebound by Lloyd out there for Dent. Yeah, Dave Davies and Hartsock along with Jackson Emery. That's the Cougar five. That's what I'm talking about with the impatience. A very quick shot by Walker, and that was a contested three. Good screen by Davies opening up the triple for Lloyd. A career high, 23 points. Florida's got to get back to ball movement and getting it inside. Oh, great right there, the try with the diving, not the lead by Davies on the pass by Walker and Fredette. Now, Davies has come in here, in the, came in in the first overtime with four fouls, and I thought his defensive presence really helped BYU. Well, he's so athletic, and he did that, of course, with his only start in the Mountain West Conference uh, Championship. Fredette in the point. Oh, my. There's a foul, and it goes inside on the Gators with the 357 to play here in our second overtime. Forget this is a great spin move, and they come over to help, and that's Boynton's fifth foul. He's gone. 
He's been the catalyst for this comeback in the Gators who were down by 13 points riding a 14 point wave of Boynton and he got the 14 points in three and a half minutes in that second half. Well, and that's just a great great performance by Boynton but that shows you the pressure that Fredette keeps on you and Fredette's feeling the pressure how he waves at the camera after he falls down. You know, for that, we're in double overtime in the NCAA tournament, and he's got to go to the free throw line. He's very, very concerned about it. <laughs> pressure? What pressure? <laughs> They've kind of ridden Jimmer for that throughout the season. Led the conference in scoring. Ah, they missed. Has led him in scoring. That's the first miss. He had uh, gone 37 consecutive free throws with his brother. Maybe TJ teaching. thinks he shouldn't have waved. Maybe, may right. He's a little bit too loose. All right, there's still, I mean, there's lots of time left in this game. Florida does not need to panic. Don't need the quick shot. They can have time to get it inside. Warner has taken the place of Boynton. So Walker is really the only true point guard or guard on the floor for the Gators. Parsons has to take the shot. And he goes for two right here. Macklin just about had it. Tyus grabs it and punches it back in. Macklin, Tyus, and Werner doing a great job on the inside. Werner now, that's a foul you shouldn't give. But Macklin, Tyus, and Werner doing a great job on the inside. Tyus comes up with his sixth point. Werner is assessed his second foul, much to the chagrin of coach Billy Donovan. Tyus does a great job getting position on the inside. Nobody blocks out Macklin. Davies has to be careful. He's got four fouls, but once they get that first tip, they're just done. How about this? The guy makes 37 consecutive free throws as we watch it again by Warner. Their best defensive player, by the way, for the Gators. Uh, for that now, he's missed two consecutive free throws after getting 37 straight. And the Cougars on top by three. Leading by as many as 13. Gators earlier in the game led by a seven. And the regulations at 75. Walker sweeps it outside to Parsons. The missed three. Lloyd defending. He releases early. He works into Walker with the foul going on Irving Walker. Now I want to tell you something. When BYU gets the ball out and goes, particularly Lloyd and particularly Fredette, they're going to attack in transition. Even That was one on three, but he goes right into Walker and draws the foul, does Lloyd. This is one on three. The Gators are back pretty well, but he just doesn't stop and give him a chance to get organized. And six of six from the free throw line this afternoon. And the fans right there, so they've missed three. The best free throw shooting team in college basketball, BYU. Missing three free throws here when it counts the most in the, in the second overtime. Again, three minutes and 12 seconds is a long, long time in a basketball game. Florida has time to get the ball inside, to move it from side to side the way they were doing earlier in the second half. Walker with the penetration, looking for Macklin. The defense was packed down low. Another steal, another turnover for Florida. And then they get it back, and that's a timeout. Did they call it? Did they recognize it? It's a travel. He rolled over with the ball. And Parsons is down. Boy, Lloyd tries to dribble the ball in traffic, and Parsons makes a nice play, banging it away. Now, Parsons, this is not a travel here. He doesn't get called for the travel until he rolls over. You know, if you slide along the floor, that's not a travel. You're allowed to dive for the ball, but the moment that he has the ball in his hands and rolls over, then that's a traveling violation. A lot of the players uh, have seen this guy's game expand, and then noticed by the media calling him the most improved player, perhaps on any team this season in the Southeastern Conference. He and his buddy Nick Kalathis were the two guns a year ago. Kalathis overseas playing. More breathing space for Parsons, who has taken advantage of more room to roam. And he gets up after the twist of his right leg, and he's they're looking at his ankle. He was trying to protect that ball so he could call a timeout, and when he rolled over, I think he got his leg tangled up with uh, Hart Sox leg. But now think of this. They've lost Boynton, who has fouled out, and looks like Parsons is going to have to sit here, obviously. So watch as he dives here. I think yeah, he fell on. I, I think Hart Sox just fell landed on his leg. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
so they're without Boynton you're right and now they're without Parsons Parsons isn't going to stay out long no. Shipman has taken the place of Parsons Macklin Shipman Tyus Walker and Warner for Florida you know, he might actually be bleeding over there that might be we we'll talk about a guy who's had some last Second shots. He's had two buzzer beaters for the Gators this season. They're working on the blood on his yep. elbow, but I thought I saw some blood on his left knee as well. Davies the screen. Switch on defense. Forget with another crossover. That's a three by Fredette. 32 points. Wow. That crossover and rising up to the three. How do you defend that? That was over Shipman, who just came in for the injured player. Walker for three. Oh! How about that? He's got 13. Florida simply will not go away. How many times can they come back from deficits? Another screen by Davies. Shipman stuck with them that time on the crossover try. Warner is on Emmer. Macklin is watching Davis. Walker's going to watch Lloyd. Tyus will be on Hartson. Shot clock down to eight. Lloyd off the screen and down the lane. Warner couldn't get it. Rejected by Tyus inside on Davies' attempt. That's his a, second clutch shot this afternoon. It's a great rebound and a great block, but you talk about teams trading baskets. Look at this crossover. Shipman's wondering where in the world <laughs> did the ball go? What well, goes into the net? Great screens for Walker. Again, he is a very good three-point shooter when he's under control. So Parsons comes back in. Shipman will take a breather on the Donovan bench. BYU going to try to run some clock. Keep Jackson Emery in mind here. He is an excellent three-point shooter. He's matched up against Parsons. If Parsons goes to help, Emery may find himself open. Emery was second in the Mountain West Conference in three-point shooting. The switch on defense. Now Macklin is watching Fredette with a three. Bulls high! What a shot by Fredette! With one try to play in our second overtime, a game I 35. Scoreless in overtime, number one. He's come up with big shots here in the second OT in Oklahoma City. Macklin afraid to get too close to him, and he just shoots it over the top. Here we got a 93-86 lead for BYU in our second overtime. Davies comes out on Walker. Tyus missing the three. Now, Tyus now has some three-point range. He's made four on the year, but that's not really the guy you wanted in that situation. This is a tough team to foul, and you're going to have to foul now. Here comes Lloyd, who is held by Walker. 104 to play. And Walker picks up his third personal foul. And how tough is for that? We've seen him drive to the basket the entire game. And Macklin knows he can't get too close because he doesn't want him to drive by. And Fredette just rises up and shoots it over top of the 6'10 guy. It is Jimmer time. Jimmer Fredette has led this 12-5 BYU run in the second overtime. Now make it 13-5. Fredette has put an eight. Lloyd, it's been the backcourt of these two players, which has been pivotal for the Cougars today. Well, the guy who really got him rolling once Florida started getting back in the game was Lloyd. Lloyd has, you know, Fredette's been outstanding throughout the game, but Lloyd, Lloyd had that big streak in the first half and then a big streak in the second half. What a backward call. Walker with the miss. Parsons tries to punch it back in. Either he or Tyus got a hand on the ball. Again, the pressure of Florida. Here comes Emery. And now for that. You don't want to foul him, but you're going to have to foul quickly. And they get Emery. Tyus was lunging in. Yeah, see, you're running out of options mm -hmm. in terms yep. of who you can foul. Emery, you know, he's a 75% free throw shooter, so relatively speaking, you got to put him on the line. You notice that BYU hadn't thrown the ball to Davies because he's only a 57% shooter from the line. 
And Emory with the fade. And coming up next will be second seeded Kansas State against the Mean Green of North Texas, the 15th seed. Florida's going to look back on this, Kevin, and see that they had two shots at the end of regulation, the end of the first overtime to win the game. And they couldn't make even one. And Parsons fans on the long three right there. Timeout. BYU. That is their final timeout in the second overtime. I don't know, <laughs> Dave Rose. He appears to be pretty comfortable. I don't know if that's a timeout that he wanted. And the ball has been kind in the second overtime, which has led BYU to the lead of 95-88. Well, the Florida Gators lost their sharpshooter, Kenny Boynton, and Billy Donovan has not found a suitable replacement. They've been outscored 10 to 5 by BYU, and Fredette has been terrific. Hawes, who just checks in as foul as he got the inbound pass. 29.8. Boynton with 26 points. And at the free throw line at the other end will be Hawes. Who's yeah. only made 40 consecutive free throws. Yeah, he, he's been terrific. And he is the two-time Mr. Basketball of the state of Utah. Freshman, Alpine, Utah. Oh, he's got that, he's got that tough looking eye. He got yeah. hit in the eye in the conference tournament against TCU. Didn't play in the championship. Fractured an orbital low bone. And no mask. He's going to tough it out. And here is Walker over for deck. Picked up by Parsons. And the tap in to make it a seven point game. BYU is out of timeouts. Florida has one quick foul on the Gators. Well, Fredette actually blocked that shot by Walker, and I think Fredette has done an outstanding defensive job down the stretch and in the overtimes against Walker, and that has been a key to the game. It has, and he and Boynton were going head-to-head, -head, mano a mano, throughout most of the game, and this is a kid also who had nothing in that first overtime, no points. There's Boynton. He fouled out with 27 points. Just a tremendous effort by Boynton. Jimmy Fredette from Glens Falls, New York. Billy Donovan said one of the most impactful players he has seen on any given team in college basketball this season. Into Macklin. Walker with the assist. Macklin with 16. And Billy Donovan just told his guys not to foul. That's it. BYU has won their first first round game in the NCAA tournament since 1993. Stopping a string of seven consecutive first round losses. It takes double overtime, but the Cougars from the Mountain West Conference have beaten the 10th seeded Florida Gators 99 to 92. And now they'll take on the winner of second seeded Kansas State and 15th seeded North Texas. The Cougars go to 30 and 5. They've won four consecutive games. And Jimmer Fredette put in 37 points. He shot 50% from the field, 13 of 26 from all over the floor, gliding in down the lane. And while the inside shot proved to be good and working his way against Boynton most of the day, his outside shot was just as effective as he knocked down three triples and the 13 of 26 open shooting from the field. He took a hard foul in this overtime and here is the pressure of the NCAA tournament hey mom it's great to be back at the big dance and BYU with a win the seventh seeded Cougars and that's what kind of day it was for this team as Brandon Davies another freshman on this BYU Ball Club and Michael Lloyd with a terrific afternoon, a career high 26 points, all fueling the BYU win 99 92.